Hello, I'm David Giese, the CEO and co-founder of Analytics. Today I'm going to be talking about Notion, a software tool that we like to use when documenting our software in a medical device or software as a medical device. Um, so what you can see here is the Mac OS Notion app with our design history file uh, template opened up. So this is a set of templates and Notion, a bunch of documents that we've developed over time for documenting the design history file for medical devices and producing 510Ks. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing off some of the key functionality of Notion, uh, primarily focused on people who haven't used Notion before and also focusing on its features that, that we use heavily. Uh, so Notion does a lot of things. Um, just to start, it's a it's a paid software as a service. You have to pay a certain amount per user. Um, it does a lot of things. It acts as both a document editor, um, which I can show quickly here. Also, let me create a new page. You click forward slash page. Um, so here we have a new page or, or document. Um, and on this page, we can write text. Uh, we can, you know, all the typical things you're used to, bold, uh, you can add links, you can add code, you can add math equations and so on. You can write comments. Um, Notion, unlike Word, it has relatively limited formatting options. We actually find that to be a strength because we, we typically don't want people uh, having too much control over the formatting. Um, it's based in Markdown originally, so if you know Markdown, um, like many software engineers do, you can you can start writing, for example, a header one. If you do pound space, uh, you get heading one. You can create lists, uh, tab to create sublists, and all of the things you're used to. There's some more exotic um, block types you can kind of explore, but a few of them we use callouts. Um, any in in our documents, anything that's in a callout is kind of like a comment that gets stripped out of the generated documents. So that can be useful for things like links back to uh, the source of a diagram or comments about like we wrote it this way because we think this is a better regulatory strategy, but you don't necessarily want someone to read that in the final exported document. So that's that's a callout block. Um, there's, there's simple tables, there's to-do lists. We use those heavily um, with our, our work items. Um, toggle lists can be useful for hiding information, but providing more detail and so on. Um, in addition to uh, documents, the other big feature that Notion has is a database. Um, so I'm going to create a database here. This is what they call an inline database. And what you can see is we've got three rows, and really each of these rows is itself also a page. Um, so if I, I'll say my database here, and then click open it. In this case, it opens on the side, although you could expand it to take up the full page. Um, and so this itself is a page, and we can write create blocks inside of it. Um, although what's different is unlike this my page up here, there's additional metadata or structured data attached to it. And this is based on the properties in the database. So right now we just have tags, but we can add um, a variety of other things. So for example, if you wanted a database to document the various um, key software items or key software modules in your device, you can have a page for each one and you can have different metadata about those software items stored in the tags, but then at the same time have free-form, unstructured content uh, within it. One of the most powerful parts of Notion is the fact that you can link together related databases. So create a new database here. Uh, so and then here, let me create a new property, and you'll see there's text, number, 
uh, multi-select and you know person files, every, all sorts of fun, fun goodies. There's formulas for calculating values based on other values in the database. But then here we have a relation. So I'm going to create a relation to my second database, and this creates a linkage between the two. Um, by default, it's a many-to-many -many relationship, but you can also set it to be a, a one-to-one uh, one relationship. Um, and then f you can also have it show up on both sides. So if you want, if I select this, then it will add a new property on my second database, and you'll be able to add items in the relationship on either side. So I'll go ahead and do that. Click Add Relation. And close it. And sure enough, you can see here's a relation property, you can tell from the arrow on this side and this side. Let me go ahead and fill in these, the title for these other pages. And so here we'll see this and you can see I've got page D here. And as soon as I add it, it shows up over here. So we use these relation properties to handle traceability between a variety of information items that are needed for regulatory submissions. Uh, and for your design history file. And we found it to be quite, quite an effective way to handle traceability. Um, a few other things to mention. You'll see over here, there's the sidebar. And when I added this page, you can see it shows up in the sidebar in the appropriate place and the sub databases show up over here. Um, another thing maybe I should mention is a page can have sub pages. In, so I'll go ahead and add this, and then I'm going to go up. And there's a few ways I could go up. I could just click here in the sidebar. I could click in the breadcrumbs, or I can do Apple Shift U, which is a keyboard shortcut I suggest learning to just go up a level. And you can see this. Here's the link that takes you down. Um, OK, so we have the sidebar. Here's the, the breadcrumbs. You can see the permissions for a page over here. You can see all the comments. You can see the history of edits to the page, which can be useful. You can favorite the page. And there's a variety of other options over here, um, you know, if you want to make the page full width and so on. Um, one last thing I'd like to talk about is uh, uh, linking between documents. So unlike Word and Excel, where each document is its separate own separate file, and you can easily copy them and make duplicate copies. Notion's really designed to have everything in one space where everyone's editing the one copy. Um, that can be an adjustment for people who are used to being able to do work kind of privately on them by themselves and then coming back and emailing it out to the rest of the group or uploading it somewhere. Um, Notion's really not designed to work that way because it's all, you're editing everything live, like in Google Docs, but also because everything is interlinked. And so because it's all interlinked together, that's a great power, but it also makes it more difficult to, um, to, to make copies of things in, in, in many cases because you, by copying it, you break the linkages. So how, how do these links work? So if you type the at sign, Shift 2, you'll see a little menu here. Um, this is like you've seen probably a lot of other applications. And you can, you can mention a time, you can mention people, but most usefully, you can mention other pages. And so here, I'll just say uh, subpage. So here's now a link to this subpage, um, which is, is nice. But perhaps even more useful, oh, let me, actually, let me mention page D here. So if I now go to page D, you can see there's a backlink which shows everywhere where this page is mentioned. And this ends up being very useful if, say, you have a software requirement or a software item um, that you're tracking for your regulatory submission and late in the process you want to make modifications to it. You can then use these backlinks to track down everywhere that has touched that to see what changing that item will affect downstream or upstream. Um, so we we use mentions in a variety of ways, both like for what I just said, but even simpler things like um, we have a, a database of glossary terms for the whole project, and we we'll use at mentions to mention the glossary terms in documents. And that way, if you click on it, it will 
within Notion, you can then go straight to the de definition and read it. Um, but it also makes it clear where you can see everywhere that uses a definition using the backlinks. Um, and it, it pro enables some other fancy functionality that I'll, I'll talk about in a future video. So I hope that's helpful. And yep, we'll leave it there for now.